All right, everyone, we're going to ask you to put on your dancing shoes. We're going to talk about Broadway and what does it take to get a show on Broadway and make it a big hit? Well, joining us now is veteran producer Roy Miller, and let's talk about that right now. How do you become a producer? Uh, you know, everybody has a different path. I and a lot of my producing partners, uh, we were actors. I now lovingly refer to myself as a recovering actor. <laughs> First step is admitting. Uh, but that was my entree into the industry. And uh, once I realized that uh, unless you're, you're really good, uh, you're going to have a hard time making a living. So I decided to go on to the other side of the footlights. So did you consider yourself a really good actor? I was an okay actor. I was really good, but I wasn't you know, I would hear people through the door, and I, they were better than me, and I was smart enough to admit it to myself. Well, if I wasn't on this news desk, just a little secret on television here, I wanted to be on Broadway myself, so if I break into song, you'll understand. It's never too late. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, th now, has anyone ever really um, done that before, like, be you know, switched gears from, say, being a, an, an accountant and gone on to Broadway? Uh, you know what? A lot of my producing partners, some of them come from a, ba uh, from a money side of things, uh, bankers and whatnot. Uh, a lot of the producers I work with come from the creative side. I like to think of myself as a creative producer. A lot of the things that I enjoy more are developing new works. I've done a lot of shows, revivals of West Side Story and whatnot, but uh, you, you kind of know what the end result is going to be because it's been around before, but doing a brand new show, it's, you know, it's kind of pulling something out of the ether and you never know how it's going to land. Where do you get some of your projects? Like, where do you dream these ideas up? You know what? People uh, send me scripts all the time. I'm invited to readings all of the time. Uh, one show, Drowsy Chaperone, I, I got an invitation to go see a show, the show up at this very small theater in Canada. And literally the weekend of uh, Thanksgiving in 2002, I found myself on a plane going to see this show with a terrible title. And uh, I went because there was a little caption in the, in the review. It said, a man puts on his favorite cast recording and it magically comes to life in his apartment in his mind. And I thought, well, that'll be fun for me. Probably not uh, probably not a mainstream type of show, but I went anyway, and it was one of the funniest things I had seen, uh, and there I was in Canada, the only American to pretty much have seen the show. I was like, well, who am I to think that it's going to go global? And seven years later, it won five Tony Awards. I was just going to say, let's give you a little credit there. You won five Tony Awards for that. That's just, that's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, in this business, four out of five shows fail on average, uh, don't recoup their entire investment. So you get one and it uh, becomes addictive. And how difficult is it to fundraise for a Broadway show? I mean, that's, that's a big well, part of it that people really don't see. That's the behind the scenes stuff. It, you know, if I tried to produce Drowsy two years ago, I don't know what the end result would have been with the recession and all of that. But back in 2004, 2005, amazing that a show uh, with that title, no one would read the script when I would send it around just because of the title itself. Um, but it wasn't until I brought my secret weapon, the, one of the writers who also starred in the show and won a Tony for writing it, I brought him down from Canada and they did a reading for all of my colleagues in New York and that's really when it started to pick up steam. And we see all sorts of different shows right now on Broadway, including Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> and he's back on there, and I guess he's doing pretty good over there. Um, he, that was a limited engagement, and surprisingly, uh, it was only... Uh, only supposed to be a 10-week engagement. It wasn't expected to run any longer. And it recouped and made some money for all of our investors, which is amazing in this day and age. Uh, we try to run shows as long as we possibly can. Uh, but what, even what is the, the, the normal time on Broadway? Uh, you know what? You, you open a show, and you, our job, once it opens, is to just maintain the advertising and keep it running as long as we possibly can. What is the longest running show right now on Broadway? Uh, I think Phantom probably takes the takes the award for that 20 something years. All right, now let's talk about Christmas Story because that's, uh, that's one of your new projects. Tell me all about that. Uh, I got involved with it about two and a half years ago. Uh, it's based on the classic 1983 movie that everyone watches over and over again on Christmas Day, <laughs> Absolutely. 24 hours back to back. Um, I always loved the movie growing up and when uh, two writers, Benj Pask and Justin Paul, wrote the music to it, which is perfectly integrated into a great story, uh, I instantly fell in love with it. And uh, Peter Billingsley, who played Ralphie in the movie, uh, is one of our producing partners, so no I'm, I'm, I'm uh, starstruck myself a little bit. Uh, and he's a big film producer in L.A. now. He produced is all he of really? Vince Vaughn's movies wow. and uh, Iron Man. So we produced, uh, we produced it in Chicago last year. It was very, very uh, big success there, and uh, we're coming in this year. I'm kind of starstruck by him, too, because yeah. everybody knows the famous line. 
Ooh, You'll shoot your eye. There you go. There you go. How, now, how did you get him involved? Uh, we actually, uh, we actually kind of found each other. He had heard about it, and we of course knew that he was a film producer, and uh, we kind of found ourselves, we kind of got together. Now that's a more of a seasonal show. Do you see it running uh, through the summer months and? Even for We're going to change the title to Easter Story in April and then <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> no, it's, it's just a seasonal show, and okay. we're hoping to run it year, year after year on Broadway and in major markets all just around the country. Just what a phenomenal idea. Yeah. And it's gonna, is it going to be in uh, other cities as well? Yeah. Uh, last year we did a mini tour of it. This year, just Broadway. And who knows, next year possibly we'll do a, a mini tour and Broadway. Uh, the sky's the limit. And uh, I understand that there's going to be another movie that's going to be coming to Broadway possibly, and that's Animal House. Indeed. All right, tell me about that. Um, everybody knows the movie. <laughs> uh, all I can say is Casey Nicola, who directed and choreographed uh, Drowsy Chaperone for me, and also is enjoying great success with Book of Mormon, is directing uh, Animal House. So he's Mr. Funny Bones himself, and Bare Naked Ladies are writing the music. So hold on for the ride. All right, and any final thoughts that you want to share with us about uh, what it takes to be a Broadway success? Be fearless, don't take no for an answer. Uh, I guess I can quote Herb Gardner, an author of my first Broadway show, I'm Not Rappaport. He was quoted in an article about me and he said, to be a producer in today's theater, Roy has great passion, which is important, and he's also a little crazy, which is essential. <laughs> now I know what he meant by that years later. <laughs> Well, listen, this has been a fun, fun interview. Uh, certainly, if you're looking for any altos, please call me. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much, Roy <laughs> Thank Miller. You. Thanks so much.